Ready to welcome Prince Karim Aga Khan, spiritual leader of the world's Ismaili Muslims, at the start of his first visit to the Central Asian countries of Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. Both have important Ismaili communities. The Aga Khan's arrival in the Tajik capital, Dushanbe, at the government's invitation was a landmark, a significant step towards harmony and stability within the former Soviet Republic. Once a buffer state between communist Russia and the Islamic states of Afghanistan and Pakistan to the south, Tajikistan was devastated by a bitter civil war following independence. The cost? Up to 50,000 lives lost and one million people displaced. Two-thirds of Tajikistan's six million people are ethnic Tajiks, most of them Sunni Muslims. Islam has flourished in the post-Soviet era, but the economy is in tatters. President Imomali Rachmanov and his guest formalized links established two years ago to help people recover from the effects of war and the collapse of the Soviet supply system. The agreement, signed in Dushanbe, enabled the Aga Khan Development Network to increase its involvement in the country. An emergency famine relief program is already in place in the troubled eastern province of Gorno Badakhshan, home to a significant number of Ismaili Muslims. Since independence, contact has increased between religious communities in the region and beyond. However, recent upheavals have touched religion. After independence, Muslim fundamentalists briefly held power with Democrats. They were driven out by neo-communists. Now, the accents on national reconciliation. That the leader of the Shia Ismaili Muslims should meet the Mufti of Tajikistan underlined what's now a general commitment to plurality and tolerance. This mosque is one of many built since freedom of religion became a fact of life. Across the awesome Pamir mountain range, the Aga Khan traveled from Dushanbe to Tajikistan's easternmost province of Gonobarakshan, a semi-autonomous region of difficult access in winter. The geographical isolation doesn't seem to have protected the region from unrest. Fighting between government troops and rebels had resumed only weeks before the Aga Khan's visit. Despite the recent disturbances, however, Ismaili faithful and other well-wishers gathered to welcome the Ismaili leader on his historic visit. Since early 1993, the Aga Khan Foundation, AKF, has provided much-needed food supplies. Some 200,000 people live in the province, which covers almost half the total land surface of the country. Emergency aid is not part of the foundation's mandate, but famine threatened. The intervention made good sense. AKF had long experience of work in northern Pakistan, just 30 kilometers to the south. Both regions have a similar environment, but political and religious stability are a top priority in Gorno Badakhshan. Essential to the creation of a higher order of human relationships is the acceptance of pluralism. Within the Muslim world, for example, Thoughtful and heartfelt differences exist in regard to the interpretation of the faith. Nothing is gained by imposing one interpretation on people disposed to another. Indeed, the effect of such coercion is a denial of the principles of the faith. There's little doubt that much can be gained if peace prevails. The levels of social services, health and education, a legacy of the Soviet era, are amongst the highest in the world. But to meet new demands, the Aga Khan Foundation is setting up long-term educational programs aimed at promoting the study of English and economics in the region. Near the provincial capital, Korog, the Aga Khan also visited the hydroelectric power station, Pamir One. His foundation and the United States helped complete the first phase, and funds for the next stage are under consideration. When it's finished, Pamir One could meet the needs and energy of almost three quarters of the region's population. This could do much to slow down deforestation. In recent winters, lack of diesel fuel forced people to use wood. Up to 5% of all trees, many of them fruit-bearing, were cut down. Another high-profile scheme is underway. Apart from the famine relief operation, which can only be short-term, the AKF also launched a development program funded by government agencies around the world 
to improve agricultural production. Farmers have agreed to give up a fixed quantity of their future crop in return for seed and diesel fuel. To the northeast, the Kyrgyz Republic was the last stopover in the Aga Khan's tour. Despite unrest around the southern city of Osh, where relief supplies are now brought by rail from Europe before making a long road journey to Gorno Badakhshan, Kyrgyzstan has remained fairly stable under the leadership of Askar Akayev. He's presided over rapid change in the transition to a market-led economy. With support from the World Bank and other major financial institutions, Kyrgyzstan broke free from the Russian ruble zone. Its new currency, the SOM, has held its value, sparing people the kind of severe hardship experienced in other former Soviet states. Concluding his visit to Central Asia, the Aga Khan praised the Kyrgyz model. I share your vision, President Akayev, that the way forward will require continued imaginative efforts to link the Kyrgyz Republic's human and economic potential, whether in tourism, hydroelectricity, minerals or agriculture, within an appropriate regional context. The Ismaili leader said that religious and political tolerance had served Kyrgyzstan well. Emphasizing the need for greater understanding and cooperation, he declared himself ready to extend his development network. This could help promote societies where justice would prevail and foster stability and prosperity in Central Asia's post-Soviet era.